Hello, welcome to the Holistic Healer Podcast, a podcast dedicated to all things holistic. I am your host, Cheryl Lee. Today's guest is Queen Aline. She is a health and detox coach who at the time of this recording is on day 43 of a 100-day juice fast. Today we dive into self-love, self-worth, developing self-discipline, the journey of juicing to reclaim her health, supportive community, and so much more. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Holistic Healer Podcast. I'm your host, Cheryl Lee. And today I have a super special guest. Her name is Aline, otherwise known as Queen Aline on her handle, which is amazing. She is a health and detoxification coach. And I think, are you on day 43 of a 100-day juice juice fast? That's right. Wow. Amazing. Wow. That is so, I can't even wait to talk to you about this. I did one, what, like a year ago and I made it to 21 days, but I can't wait to talk to you more about your journey and like 43 days. Wow. That is amazing. Wow. So thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah. Like I said, I'm so excited to have you here. So I always like to start with a little bit of a backstory. Like if you could maybe just tell us about your journey as to kind of what got you into juicing raw foods and this kind of present moment, having you sitting at day 43 of a hundred day juice fast. (laughs) Yay. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for having me here. It's such an honor. I love sharing my journey. I love having the opportunity to, you know, connect with like-minded individuals that are on this healing path. And I'm just so grateful to be here today, to be alive and to be in the presence of such a beautiful goddess such as yourself. And thank you, likewise. Having me. So yeah, my name is Aline and I'm 40 years old today. I am a single mom. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Well, not today, today, but I'm, I'm the 40 now. <laughs> okay, you're 40 now. Got you. I thought today was your birthday. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Oh, we can celebrate today. <laughs> yeah, we can. We'll just pretend it's your birthday today. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so I'm French speaking. So sometimes my English is <laughs> sometimes the word. That's okay. Yeah, so I'm originally from Montreal, Canada. And uh, yeah, I'm a single mom and I've been on this self-healing journey for, I would say, um, intensely as a plant-based, you know, journey for the last 10 years. But really it's been since I'm like 15 that, you know, I started really digging deep. I started, you know, having to go to therapy. I was in and out of different treatment centers, um, mainly for uh, eating disorders when I was younger. So I struggled oh, wow. with a lot of bulimia, anorexia. Um, I was very, very underweight at some point, And then I went very, very overweight at other points. I was just like, you know, food wow. was a drug from the start. Um, I really numbed myself a lot with it. I didn't really fully yeah. understand what was going on. A lot of ancestral stuff going on. Yes. Um, yes. So it's been a journey of like, you know, and then after that, well, I got into uh, drugs, alcohol later on after that, it's sort of like I transferred the food addiction into these other substances, into Mm -hmm. sex addictions, uh, a lot of depression, a lot of suicidal Mm -hmm. thoughts, ideations, behaviors, very self-destructive. I was like, just just annihilate myself. So I didn't really fully understand, you know, I was medicated. I went to doctors. I took a lot of pharmaceuticals, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, sleeping pills, all the stuff. So I was very, very heavily medicated for a long time. And, but I knew deep inside, like, there's gotta be another way. There's, there's, this is, this is not sustainable. I don't feel like myself. Like I like to feel all the emotions. There was part of me that really wanted to feel. And then there was another part that just wanted to numb. Yeah, numb out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when I discovered the, I was living in Belize. So I've been living in Belize since 2005. Uh, I moved there. I just discovered the beach. I loved the country. I felt at home there. So I moved there in 2005. And I basically lived there for about 11 years. And in that time um, is when I went plant-based. And yeah, I was just like, this is what I have to do. You know, I was struggling with a lot of uh, different skin issues, digestive issues as well. 
And then yep. I did a bit of research and I was like, what? Meat takes so much time to digest in the body. Well, maybe I should just like lay off the meat for a little while and see what happens. So that's kind of how it yeah. happened. And I love the yeah. animals, but you know, really it was health that really got me into yep. it. And then the, my love for animals kind of grew after that. Yeah. That kind of was a, po- a byproduct of kind yes. of stepping onto the path. I know it seems to be like it's either one or the other. Either you get into it for ethical reasons mm-hmm. and then go for the health, yeah. all the uh, amazing health benefits or vice versa. Yeah. So what was it that made you kind of like, so it's one thing to kind of get on the path of like you were plant-based and then what kind of made you decide that you wanted to start exploring raw foods and living foods? Yeah. Well, that happened pretty early on, actually, that I discovered um, the path of living foods, you know, that I heard about Aris Latham and then yes. Dr. Baby. Uh, I discovered Fully Raw Christina around that same time. So kind of I was being exposed to it right from the start. And yeah. I knew deep in my heart that this is what I was meant to be doing, but it took me a long time to get there. You know, I was yes. experimenting with some juice cleanses, but then I would go back to, you know, the pastas and the potatoes yeah. and the beans. And so for many years, I was like, I would still say like high raw, maybe like 70%, but I was still having those other foods. But it's yeah. really because I wasn't really seeing I was seeing some improvements, but I still knew I could feel better. It was like, how can I feel better? How can I feel better? And then Dr. Morris came along a little bit later. And then I understood that, oh, I needed more fruit in my lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. Professor Arnold Eretz, too. I started finding Professor Spira. So they were like, fruit, you know, eat the fruit. And that's the most detoxifying. And yeah. then when I did my first extended juice cleanse, which was three years ago, that was really my first, I would say, longest full experience with raw foods, with living foods. Um, I had done a few days, a few weeks before that, but really when yeah. I did, I did 113 days. That was three years ago. Oh and I was like, whoa, goodness. I feel amazing because wow. I'm on living foods. Like I'm on juices, which is fruits mostly, and then some green juices. So I was like, okay, there's yeah. something here. I'm coming online. And then I realized I wanted to help people. I wanted to, you know, just like make this my life now, start growing my yeah. own food. And, you know, my one of my dreams is to create a community, you know, eventually to, to have a space where we could grow our own food, gather yes. together, host retreats, things like that. So all of this kind of like came online around the same time. So that's when, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So you're, so in, when you got into the juicing, who was kind of, what was the catalyst for that? Like who, or who was like, did somebody really kind of inspire you to start going on extended juice fast like that? Yes. I would say two people. I have a, I have a good friend of mine that I knew in Belize called Queen Nicole and she okay. did a 48 day juice cleanse. And I was like, Whoa, you know, I thought that was you know, like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like where are you getting your yeah. protein from? How is she still yeah. alive? All these questions, right. That many people have when they, when they, you know, see what I'm doing. They're like, Oh my gosh, what are yeah, you doing? Right. But I had all those. So she showed me what was possible. And then I discovered a man by the name of Shane Sterling. He has yeah. raw vegan heroes. Uh huh. So I discovered him on YouTube and he was talking about mucoid plaque. And he was like, well, you got to yeah. go 40 days, a juice cleanse or more to remove the mucoid plaque. This is what's causing depression, bloating, constipation, yeah. all these health problems. I was like, whoa, I never heard about mucoid plaque before. So as soon as I heard 40 days, I said, I have to do this. Um, so I joined his community and I just went yeah. for it 40 days. Um, but then I kept releasing more and more. And he was like, well, as long as you're releasing, you got to keep on going. So I kept on going for over a hundred days and um, I went on to becoming his assistant too for a while. I was working for him in that group. So, you know, it like snowballed into me finding out like, oh, I'm a coach and I like to do this and I like to help others. And then I started my YouTube channel and all of that. So yeah, it came from that juice cleanse. Um, So yeah, Shane and Nicole really inspired me to go the distance with the juice cleanse. And then having a community. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the community. So, and sorry. So how long ago was that, that you did that? that? Three years ago. Three years ago. Okay. And so at the end of that, like, were you using anything during that juice cleanse, like to help things along like enemas or colonics, or did you just use straight juices? 
So I wasn't really doing the enemas or colonics at that point. Um, I did incorporate some husk and clay. Uh, that yeah, was the protocol that he was recommending. So I was having a little bit of that, which acts kind of like a broom to pull things out. So I definitely yeah. did a little bit of that. Yeah. So I did follow that protocol. But um, afterwards, I got into colonics and enemas more. Yeah. So you know, I would recommend it, but you know, I didn't do it, and it still worked. It was still really, really efficient. Yeah. Right now I'm not doing oh. any husk and clay. I'm just doing straight juices. Mm -hmm. So th with this present juice, was it just something like a challenge for yourself or did you just kind of feel intuitively like I just feel like I have more to kind of process? Because I know I've, I've heard Shane talk before about like his 40 day juice fast that he did. And then he often says like, you know, once you do it and you get rid of the mucoid plaque, then you're done. You don't really have to do it again as long as you start eating healthfully and start eating raw foods and you're not incorporating the old like you know habits that we yeah. we originally had come from so what was like your kind of um impetus to uh to start this one yeah i don't agree 100 days um <laughs> i think we have years and years of accumulated yeah. waste inside of our bodies and i think absolutely it's a long time to really get out all the old waste so yeah. depending where we come from um you know and then there's different layers of that healing yes. me. like right now i'm releasing parasites that i wasn't releasing in my last juice cleanses and i have felt the calling wow. to cleanse every year since that first juice cleanse. So I did, yeah, after that 113 days, I went six months and I did another one. I did 66 days and then wow. I went another like year and then I did another 96 days. And each time there was more plaque coming out. And wow. I was eating, I would say not perfectly 100% raw, but pretty much like I would say 95% raw with certain periods where I would have a little bit of cooked vegetables, you know, yeah, Some right. not foods, you know, I'm just like, I'm very open about my journey. I'm on a path. I guess yeah, I'm trying to be like hundred percent raw. And I've had periods where I needed a little bit more grounding and I was caught up, but I did get caught up a little bit in my addictions before this juice cleanse. I was finding myself slipping back into even like rice and you know, yeah. like the food is what gets me, like the Thai food and the Indian food, you know? I know, I know. <laughs> that's really challenging. Yeah. I think that's always, you know, we, I think we, for the most part, you know, people, when they start going down this road and you say, you know, you're going to be kind of basically withdrawing from cooked food and they think, oh, it's just food because it, we don't think of it like a drug. But when you're going through something like that, whether it's a juice fasting, water fasting, or even just eating raw foods, I mean, these cravings and these old addictions that we've had, they sometimes come full force and it takes such a strong discipline and, and, you know, always coming, I always like to say, always circle back to your why, like, why am I doing this? You know, what was my purpose in the first place? Cause it really is, it's like how, so for you, the, those addictions, like, I would imagine your first juice fast was like, is this one a little bit easier in terms of your, your cravings? Definitely. The, the first one you did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The first one was more challenging. And then as I progressed, you know, the first few days I would say are the hardest, uh, always yeah. you know, it's like two, three days just to get used to not chewing food. But then once I get past that, you know, and I know how to protect myself better now. I know, um, you know, like I went to the restaurant the other day with my family and that was really challenging. So I try to avoid certain situations yes. where I'm exposed to food or I'm smelling a lot of food. I do have to make food for my daughter. So sometimes it's hard, but like you yeah. said, when we have a strong why, it really, really helps us. And also like I have an accountability partner, my my best friend, Jenny, yeah. me as yes. with me as well. So we were both like, and we have put on some weight, we were feeling bloated, not motivated. So it affects us on an emotional level too. It's not just oh. physical. It's like, I have so much to do. Like I'm writing a book. I have so many projects. Yes. And I'm kind of feeling stuck in a lot of different ways. So this juice cleanse was really about like helping me to get back on track with my work, with my mission, you know, feeling connected more to, to, to myself, to God, and just like getting things done. Yeah. So, 
it helps to have somebody doing it with us. Oh, I can, I, I mean, I was just going to say like having, whether you're part of a membership group, like you're, you were, you have an accountability partner. It's like sometimes when you go down these like longer cleanses, detox, that type of thing, it's like, you kind of feel like a lone wolf sometimes yeah. and you know, life's happening all around us. And so I, I love that sense of community. What are some things that you have acquired in terms of self-discipline over the years of doing these juice cleanses to kind of keep you on track when things come up like restaurants or smells or, you know, you have a young daughter. So, I mean, you're, you're pre preparing food for her. I'm sure she's preparing food even for herself. So yeah. What are some self-discipline kind of tips you can give people? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great questions. <laughs> this is really helpful. I love to share. So definitely yeah. breath work has been yes. so crucial, you know, connecting to my breath and having a practice, like having yes. that, that's my anchor, you know, whenever I feel myself kind of drifting off, or I, I realize my breath isn't so deep. So I just come back to my breath. I take deep, long breaths. Yeah. I really try to like calm my nervous system down. Mm -hmm. So I focus in overcoming food addictions, uh, drugs and alcohol addictions has been you know breath work yoga like mind practicing yeah. mindfulness and just like realizing that i'm not my thoughts realizing that i'm not my cravings that i can rise above them and i have conversations with myself like sometimes yeah. i'll be like just not right now you know like don't make any decisions right now if you decide to eat tomorrow eat tomorrow yeah. but if you make a decision now you're more than likely going to regret it so just yeah, try to totally. make it to the night you know just like make it to yes. the night I move the energy around, you know, I'll dance, I'll sing, I'll scream if I have to. I try to yeah. channel that energy in different ways um, through journaling, art, creativity, work, calling a friend. Like I have my whole toolbox. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What's best in this moment. Uh, I'll go to the thrift store and like go, you know, spend a couple dollars on some. Yeah. You know, that helps. Like me. something to just kind of like like it is a distraction, but sometimes those are really needed just to get you through so that yeah. you're not going to make like an unhealthy choice that you're going to regret. Right. Yeah. For sure. We know that. So for you, like coming from um, a background of having like some eating disorders, like have you found that those like where on the healing part of that aspect, have you found that the juicing in particular has really allowed you to really face the some of the reasons that you were in that place to begin with? Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And it's a bit of a controversial subject, you know, because a lot yeah. of people like I have received that, you know, that I am still in my eating disorder, that this is very restrictive yeah. kind of way of eating. And, you know, I can only speak from my own experience, you know, and sometimes I do worry that, you know, we had the example of Queen Zana, who, you know, yeah. unfortunately passed away. And, you know, like all my very I'm sure well-intentioned and, you know, wrote to yeah. me saying like, look, look, this is unhealthy. And I'm like, well, you know, we can have eating disorders, whether we're raw vegan, we can have eating yeah. disorders, whether we are eating meat, we can have eating disorders. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and again, like, what is a disorder? Like I look around and I say, okay, well, eating a normal diet seems to me like a disorder. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's it's a very complex kind of yeah thing. I think at the end of the day is like am I loving myself am I yes. driving myself am I underindulging or overindulging and what the raw foods and the juices have helped me do is to find more of a balance right uh, with like how to nourish myself so you know like I won't restrict with the juices I won't restrict with the raw foods yeah I will eat an abundance of raw foods till I feel like full and sometimes like a little bit over full but yeah. I feel good and I don't feel like oh I need to you know purge it I don't need to like mm -hmm. You know punish myself like that because it's all nourishing yeah. so it's definitely helped me to like love myself more um, yes for yeah. sure and so like because you know I think we can look at like no one really knows like unless you've been in someone's shoes like you know mm -hmm. you've lived that part of your life you've lived that so you know firsthand what that feels like and what the reasons were that kind of led you there and so I would imagine that cultivating more self-love is like a daily, 
mm-hmm. kind of um, discipline almost like for a lot of us, right? I mean, I think a lot of us maybe are in denial about our whether or not we really truly love ourselves and what mm-hmm. that means, but like it is a practice. And yeah. so how like, is it kind of through your meditation or through your, like you said, yoga, and even the act of just juicing and knowing that that's self-love? Like, Mm -hmm. because I would imagine that, I guess what I wanted to ask you, like, do you find it difficult? Is it hard for you to to kind of cultivate that self-love? Or is every day kind of like an easier kind of step-by-step, one foot in front of the other kind of process to that place of Mm self-love? Yeah, it's definitely a day by day journey. Um, And I find myself like, it's like in the little things that I see my growth has been happening, like, Mm -hmm. uh, like speaking up for myself, you know, when something Mm -hmm. doesn't feel right in a relationship, for example, or the thoughts that I'll have in my mind, like, let's say I did, you know, have a a cheat meal, for example, just like sitting down with myself and being like, like, you're doing great, you're doing the best you can, like, love yourself. So I try to notice my thoughts that come in um and just kind of like yeah just treat myself more like I would a best friend you know I'm a really yes. great friend I love my friends I always have like such loving things to say to them so I started looking at myself like I'm my best friend and you know, it's yeah. not perfect all the time I still have the negative voice and yeah of course I make decisions that aren't so aligned with love but I just keep trying to to come back to love and really with like good supportive friends especially women in my life has been super super helpful because I've been choosing the quality of my friends too has been changing so like choosing people that will reflect to me that which I want to see in myself and that which like I give back to them so definitely having a positive circle of friends that uplift you is so important yes but yeah, I think those, all those practices have really helped me. And the living foods on their on the, their own, you know, it's it's like they're like loving foods. So the, the yeah, exactly. The food, like they'll love you back, and they'll reflect back that self love. So it's been almost it's been a very organic, natural process. And I've also worked with some plant medicine. I don't know how much we want to get into that, but yeah, I was actually going to ask you about that. So that's perfect. <laughs> yes, yes, they have been a huge catalyst for change and transformation. And, you know, they're plants as well. So everything yeah. from nature, you know, we have to seek our medicine. And I believe that all all plants hold medicine and we just have to find what resonates with us. Um, yes. or, or what seeks us. Like, it's like they found me literally, like I had no idea about any of this. And when I was struggling with drugs and alcohol addictions, um, this was presented to me as an option for healing. And I knew I didn't want to go down the pharmaceutical route. So when I found yes. out there was a natural way to to overcome, I was like, 100%. Yes, my whole body, my soul, like I went to Mexico, I had no idea what I was expecting. Was it ayahuasca that you did? So the first time I did Ibogaine. um, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who just did that. Oh, wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I I did ayahuasca later on. um, But the first my entry point was definitely Ibogaine. So I went to a a clinic, you know, they do it under clinical supervision in Mexico. And I mean, that whole experience, I like, I keep so hard to put into words, right? But I came out transformed. I came out loving life. I came out loving myself. And it almost sounds like like a rebirthing kind of happened through that process. Yes. Yes. It reprograms our brain to a pre addictive state as well. So it like helps to fire back up all the neurotransmitters that were broken damage through trauma through the drugs the alcohol the binging and purging the depression like our brain changes and so this kind of not kind of, it brings it back wow um, we have like a window of opportunity to relearn like how to develop new skill sets put in like you know take on new habits in our life as well and of course it's not like a magic thing but yeah. it definitely helps us in so many ways physically yeah. mentally emotionally spiritually like Wow. Yeah, and I'm helpful. sure like being intentional going into th- like you, you, yeah. you're a very intentional person. So yeah. I feel like going into something like that with some very strong intentions yeah. probably just magnifies the experience for yeah. you. Yeah. So when you came out of that, how long was it between the Ibogaine and the ayahuasca? Yeah. So after the Ibogaine, I was clean for 
a few months. I was clean for a few months and I'll say some of the mistakes that I did make. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, one of them was not going into therapy, uh, Mm -hmm. not going to meetings, you know, which I implemented later on after because I did end up relapsing um, Mm -hmm. after about three months after the ibogaine so i started you know started with smoking weed and then drinking alcohol yeah and then the cocaine came back in so then yeah. i went then i went for ayahuasca after i think it was six months after the ibogaine it was six months after and then i did ayahuasca wow ceremony and and the, was the ayahuasca to try to kind of like make that shift again like yes. like to yeah okay and yes. and how was that after you finished the ayahuasca yeah that was also super powerful ayahuasca is uh, it's very different from the ibogaine it's hard to compare them but it uh-huh. was another beautiful beautiful experience wow. like another, like coming home to myself I healed a lot of traumas I cried a lot a lot like there I literally faced like certain things that happened in my childhood I mean the ibogaine too but it was like like I had never felt that self-love with as, with anything else in the ayahuasca it was like I was being like mm-hmm. held by the divine mother you know it was a very yes. beautiful experience so each one of those experiences have helped me to like evolve grow transcend and I treat them with a lot of respect reverence I won't do them like back to back. I take some sure. few months to like integrate them. And then I found myself a, a coach that was like specialized in plant medicine integration. I think the integration bit is so important. Yeah, sure. Um, mm-hmm. really, like bring it home. And how am I going to, you know, bring those lessons that the medicine showed me into my life? You know, yes. like, yes, I've seen that I have to do these things to be a better mom, but like, how am I going to do that? You know, day to day. What is that? Yeah, look? In the real world. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. So that was like, that was kind of the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was like the unpacking or the processing of the emotional traumas and wounding and all of those things that, you know, I'm such a big proponent of like doing the work on that side because I feel like, you know, we can get ourselves kind of pigeonholed into just the diet. Yeah. Or, you know, you can see, you know, people just exer- over-exercising all of these things, but really it's the whole. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes the emotional aspect gets completely left out, mostly because we don't want to look at it because we don't want to go through the pain because we, by nature, I think we're pain avoiders. And so we choose to numb it down through like what you just talked about, mm-hmm. whether it's like alcohol, drugs, food, whatever anything to kind of face all of the traumas that all of us are carrying around, but so many of us don't want to look at. And so my first question was going to be through your rehab prior, like over the years, did you, had you started to kind of unpack those traumas that you had had in your life, including the ancestral traumas as well, because I'm a big proponent of that. Mm -hmm. So did that happen or was that a result of starting the living foods and the juicing? I was already started, I would say, when I was probably like around 15, 16, but uh-huh. it really like unlocked, I would yeah. say, when I started cleansing, detoxifying, and doing the plant medicine, where like it wasn't just a cognitive thing, but it was I was really ready to go into it. I think I had been scared up until that point. I really didn't understand. You know, I was in like eating disorders clinic and centers like that where we had to you know, talk about our feelings and emotions. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. I, I don't really remember really going deep, you know, it's like, oh, let me just do the work sure. and just walk out. And then I would get you yeah. know, sick again. Um, so I was kind of just going through the motions to keep everybody happy around me. But yeah, really, of course, it was like 10, I would say 10 years ago when I started. And I don't really understand that. Like, how can we not deal with our emotions when we're on this path? You know, like, how can we not when we're I on a know. juice cleanse or when we're on the fruit? It's like, Sometimes I'll just cry out of the blue. Yeah. Oh my God, I remember this thing from, you know, long time ago. But I guess it does. It maybe, maybe because I am ready and open, maybe it doesn't happen to everyone. I think even the medicine sometimes, you know, they say it'll only show you what you're ready to see. So if I'm ready to feel, if I'm ready to receive and to go deep and I feel called and I know my ancestors are, you know, calling me to to heal and and I'm, ready to do whatever it takes. And maybe that's why, but maybe not everybody is is ready to. So I think it depends on how ready we are. And I was just like, I'm ready to do whatever it takes. I was seeing people dying 
um, of like fentanyl overdoses. Yeah. And, yeah. and I remember being like, but he never cried in therapy. He never told us how he really felt. He never, mm-hmm. you know, he never went there. And I was like, I'm going to go there. Like, I don't want to die. You know, yeah. I was scared of, of ending my life too soon. So I just said, like, if I need to cry, if I need to feel, if I need to be alone, I was celibate for seven years. I said, if these yeah. men are driving me crazy, like, I'm going to just close that door for now. And God yeah. didn't see me anybody for seven years. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. To just like surrender my life to, to God, to, to my child and, and, and do what, what was being asked of me. So it's been a whole shift of like, what do I want? And I mean, yes, this yes. is also what I want, but also like what is being asked of me. And I'm like, Oh, that is what I want. So like, I didn't really realize yeah, for sure. all that before, but yeah. And then also too, I mean, you had, obviously you had an open heart and you were, you know, so many of us walk around with armor on, you know, Mm -hmm. we're all armored up and it's kind of like impenetrable, like we just can't get Mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And so did you specifically work like, um, aside from doing the plant, which I want to circle back around to your plant medicine journeys, but had you taken any time out in kind of your adult life to uncover some of the, doing some of the inner child work that, I mean, I feel is so necessary to really understand and acknowledge and respect that part of ourselves? Yes, I got to do a lot of that in Austin, actually, when I was in sober living, I was in Austin, and I just was introduced to ecstatic dancing. I was like sweat lodge. Uh, We did some art therapy. Uh, I went swimming like and, and I got to also, you know, I had to leave my daughter for a little while. So I had a little bit of time. I'm a single mom. So I, I didn't really have much uh, support from her dad. So it was just right. overwhelmed. So I got to like, yeah, just play and be with myself again and go in and have fun with friends. And it was a really, really healing time for me to, to be in that space. So I love Austin so much. I have a lot of yeah. love for that place. It was just like, yeah, I was seeing yeah. everybody get all dressed up and put on fun costumes, like just to walk down the street. And I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Expressing myself in, in those ways and, and coming home to like giving myself that. So it's been, and I realized I was very like blocked with my inner child for a long time. Even when my baby girl was small and she wanted to play, I remember it being like kind of difficult for me to sit down yes. and play. And I found it challenging. Cause like I, I was thinking of like everything else I needed to do and I was caught up in my addictions. And so I, I have, you know, I have to like give myself a lot of compassion and grace and, and her too. Of course. Like, so like I was trying, but now, now that she's 13, I want to play and she doesn't want to play anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Yeah, they get to that age where they don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, um, what, how is it now with your daughter, like um, with you juicing and how does she kind of feel about your process with yeah. doing a hundred days on juicing and kind of, I'm sure like the highs and lows that you experience on this journey? Yeah. Well, it's changed a lot. The first time I juiced, um, she was not happy about it at all. Like she wanted me to sit down with her and eat. Yeah. So that was a little bit challenging for us. Um, Sure. But, you know, she kind of got used to it and she sees my father juicing as well sometimes. So she's it's just part of her reality. And actually today, yeah. well, she's been talking about wanting to get on a juice cleanse because she hasn't been feeling that great. You know, I um, allow her to explore all, you know, whatever she wants to eat. Yeah, and sure. More of a, and I, she was vegan for a while and she was just like, resenting me a lot for it and wanted to eat what other kids were eating and yeah I I found myself being like oh my gosh am I just doing the same thing as my mom who was forcing me to eat meat and I didn't want to eat meat and it's just like that power struggle I feel is more dangerous for a a growing young woman um totally eating disorders and the control with the mother and all that so I was just like okay yes we want to explore but she she found herself not feeling good in her body and feeling bloated so she's been wanting to start a juice cleanse And so today she's starting. (laughs) Really? Oh my God, that's amazing. I know, isn't it? It it feels so good when our kids like 
you know, I feel I I feel the same as you. I mean, when my kids were young, I think I was more probably I was strict more of the younger years, and then mm -hmm. I kind of lo loosened up the reins as they got into their teenage years. But yeah. now, like my son, he's you know he's twenty one, and he he's you know he'll do he's in Mexico right now, and he's like. I'm going to do like three days on juices or I'm just going to do, you know, I'm just going to eat some fruit. And it just is like, wow, that's so amazing. Like yeah. that they have the, you know, cause I really feel like they, even though maybe at the time they're not fully uh, supportive of what you're doing, they're still taking that in and they're witnessing and they're seeing like your energy and your glow. And it's like, you can't deny when you look at you and you hear you speaking. So I think it really, you know, it, it becomes part of them. And if, even if it's not right now, I feel like they will come back around to it, you know, for sure. I'm yeah. so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. You know, I'm always a little scared to share that. There's a lot of, there's a lot of criticism, you know, in the vegan community and um, it could be a little bit harsh out there, but you know, I just, this is our yeah. life. I mean, I feel like, you know, we, we bring these beings into our world and we can lead by example, but ultimately they are on their own journey yes. and they're not, they're not on our journey. It's not, right. our journey isn't theirs. And I feel like it's a disservice to project that onto them mm -hmm. because then they carry the weight of that. You know, it's like, and we don't want to add any more to, they've got enough going on, you know? And, and so all you can do is just like trust them and, have like an open heart and just know, and I swear, like most people that I talk to, like nine times out of 10, the kids always circle back around, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just part of the path. Like we all, you know, these things are available. And especially when you're in that peer group, it's like, sometimes it's really hard to feel like you don't belong. You know, right. we have that sense to belong or to have that acceptance piece. And it's a lot to put on a child to say, mm -hmm you know, you can't go and do this. And I just feel all that does is create resentment, mm. you know, in the end. So I totally validate what you're doing. I love it. It's great. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, yeah it's of been course. a journey of me letting go too, letting go of the control, letting go of, yeah, like putting onto her what I feel is best for her. But it's like, we have to look at the long term too, you know? It's yes. like, yeah, sure. I could like have her be vegan and a certain way, you know, but then when she's 18 or you know, whatever, she leaves the house, whenever she leaves the house, who's to say that that won't, that elastic won't just yes. like, and pop and, and I'm the other way around. Exactly. And yeah. I'm always like, I don't want my kids sitting on a therapist couch when they're like 20 or whatever because of the things that I've, you know, pushed on them that maybe they just didn't want, you know, yeah. and, and they're individuals. So yeah, so I think it's, it's the, for me, it's the best thing to do for sure. And it's proven to be that way with all three of my kids, you know, they're all very health conscious. They're very aware. They're not all, they're not raw vegan, but they are very whole foods based and they make really good choices for their age, I'd say. So, That's great. you know, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, of course, for sure. Um, so for you, the community piece of, so you said you have your best friend and you're going through this together. Do you also have like, um, like an online group or something that you're doing group juicing, ju group detox, like something where you're allowing kind of others to kind of join in on what you're doing? Yeah, so I created a, com a community of my own. I, you know, when I stopped working with Shane, I was feeling called to start a community of my yeah. own. So it's called Kings and Queens of Ra. Oh, I love that. That's so that. cool. <laughs> so I call myself Queen Aline, but I don't think I'm the only queen. I think everybody's a queen and yeah, everybody's sure. a king. So we're all here, you know, God's kings and queens, um, you know, following the, the natural path and coming home to ourselves so yeah we host uh, weekly royal gatherings where sometimes we do like integration meetings and then sometimes i invite uh, a guest to come and share yeah. their journey of how they've been healing themselves um and then once in every few months uh, jenny and i we host uh, a group uh, a more this is a kings and queens is a free community but then we host a paid community called the sweet spot okay uh, the juicing group, um, but also like we offer variations, you know, if they want to do juicing and fruit, it's like a cleansing group. So then we, there we meet as well. We do support calls and it's a more like intimate group 
And right now we're in the wow. process of creating a, an app as well and a oh, and good. another like permanent uh, paid community as well. So that's in the wow, works. That's am- yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And so for you, do you have a like a spiritual practice? Do you like what does that look like? Do you practice meditation? I know breath work could certainly mm-hmm. be part of that as well. Mm-hmm. But do you have like an active meditation practice? Like what, what would that look like for you? Yes. Um, so it's changed a lot throughout the years. You know, sometimes I'm more consistent than others. And right now I've been sure. getting into uh, being more consistent with it, even if that means, you know, five or 10 minutes in the rising and then five or 10 minutes in the evening time. Um, I'm kind of like building it back up. I used to do... Yes probably more like 30, 45 minutes, um, you know, a while ago. And then I kind of came off, but I'm bringing it back. So I definitely like in the rising before I get on my phone, before I do anything, like I try to take five, 10 minutes, just like sitting in silence, you know, cross-legged with my hands on my knees and just like centering myself, setting like an intention. And I do that in the evening time too. I have a little altar where I pray, I get on my knees, I light some candles and I, you know, that's great. Pray to Jesus, pray to God, pray to my ancestors yeah. and, um, you know, ask for protection like that. So, yeah, I try every day to to connect and read a bit of the Bible, read some. I also really love Buddhism as well. So, yeah, I read some, you know, different spiritual books. I'm not just I'm not like religious particularly, but yep. I do like to to take different different teachings from different. Yeah, spiritual. that's so I'm so with you on that. I love to just kind of look into, I feel like there's like nuggets of wisdom in like all of the teachings, you know, and it's just kind of allowing yourself to be guided as to what's kind of resonating at the moment. And it's like, there's so much to be, you know, you can get so much inspiration, I feel from, yeah, like reading something from, from Buddhism, and then you can go to Christianity, like there's all of these different things that can just add, like, I feel like too, you know, as we get older, we're more open to the idea of these things. And so it's like, for me anyways, I'll read something and it's like, I feel it in every cell of my body. Like, it's it's like that, it's like that integration piece, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, wow, it's like, I just read that and I feel as if like, it's completely integrated into me by through the words of reading. It's really quite powerful. And then the breath work as well. Is that a daily practice for you, the breath work? Yes. Yes. Okay. Daily practice. Um, Is I it like, like Wim Hof breath. kind of style breath work or what, or like what kind of breath work specifically are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do Wim Hof, um, mm-hmm. but I, I like how my friend Jerome said it. He taught me this because I used to think I had to do it like every day, you know what? 6am and have this like consistent practice but yeah. when, I, when I talked to him one time I go how what is your meditation practice and he goes on demand so oh, I, yeah, I love that. With that like on demand you know like if I need some you know alternate nostril breathing I'll do that I really just tap into what is it that I need right now do I need a yeah. you know breath of fire or do yeah, I need yeah. slow breathing so I'll do it sporadically like throughout the day sometimes before yeah. my meditation uh but if I'm finding myself like even in the car sometimes I'll do a little bit of breath work so I try to like yeah. weave it into my days and for me that feels really good um I'm a Pisces so I'm very like fluid I'm, I'm not like yeah. the most like routine kind of person so I'm like how can I weave this into my day and make this part of my everyday life so yeah like beautiful that. yeah <laughs> So are you kind of part, are you still in Belize part-time? Yes, I am. So right now I'm in Montreal, but we do have, uh, we have a little like jungle resort in Belize that I go to. And, you know, my daughter's dad is from there. So she goes back there to to visit him. So we do spend, we go, you know, twice a year right now. Um, She is in school right here. And, you know, eventually we'd love to move back there, build a little like, tiny home village. Uh, yeah, amazing. In space. So, but you know, all, it, all in due time. Yeah, for sure. Everything always just kind of, you know, manifests as it should. What about for you living in the, like I'm from Canada too. So it's like, how, how do you handle the cold weather and eating this way? I mean, perfect time right now to be doing a juice cleanse. Cause you're like in the beautiful, like in the summer and everything, but like, for me, my goal is to definitely 
you know, I want to move somewhere mm-hmm. more tropical so that I can have access to, yeah. you know, fruit hanging off the tree and putting my feet in the ground. So how do you cope in the winter time? <laughs> I struggle a lot. Yeah, I bet. I struggle a lot. Especially after living in Belize. I mean, yeah. this is complete opposition of each other. Oh, it's it's hard. It's hard. And I and I do travel during the winter. Like God bless. Yes, <laughs> I, yes. You know, I have I have to because I don't I don't know. I really get depressed. I str- I still struggle with, you know, seasonal depression when I'm here. Yes. Or, not getting enough sunlight, being inside. Um, I used to have a dog that I had to, that we were walking like three times a day. I had to go outside and walk in the yeah. cold. I mean, it helped to get some exercise, but yeah. I just dreaded going outside sometimes. Um, but yeah, you know, for sure. Go through it and the living foods actually help. Like as hard as it is, it does still help to to stay like on a positive mood, yes. a positive mood. Um, and I have juice cleansed during a winter time. Yeah, I was yeah, I was a part of a winter time where I did juice cleanse, which was kind of crazy. <laughs> like I was remember walking in the snow carrying my Oh uh, yeah, juice with your fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the tropics. This is crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, also too for you, I would imagine just the quality as well, right? Like having things kind of shipped in as opposed to like things that are local. I mean, in Belize yeah. you've got I mean yeah. Is that something that you'd like to, would you like to move there permanently again? Or do you really kind of see yourself staying part-time in Montreal? Oh, no. Like, I'm, I, maybe, maybe I would have a foot um, somewhere in the States, like in Austin. Maybe like between yeah. Austin and Belize would be my ideal situation. You know, yeah. something, something to, you know, because I do love to travel. I love Belize. I would love to be there, you know, most of the time. And also it's kind of nice to go back to you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh. Movie theaters and all that stuff. Yeah, just to kind of have the blend of the two, right? Because I know sometimes it could be probably a little bit like you're not living in the United yeah. States or in Canada where we have all these, you know, things that we love right at our fingertips. So, right. but I feel like it would be really amazing just for the soul to just really reconnect when yeah. you're living in a place like that, you know, and you're not, you don't have all of these distractions all the mm-hmm. time which kind of sometimes it's that's just the daily work is to not allow all the distractions to get ahead of what's really important right because it just I mean I think it happens to all of us so so right now so you've taught you've got your kings and queens group then you also so your paid community what how do people connect with that Mm -hmm. well it's still in the works so we don't have it officially up yet but I could definitely share. I'm also creating a new website. It's going to be queenaline.com. Okay. So that's in the process of being created as well. Okay. Um, for now, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, they could message me at rawveganqueenaline at gmail.com. Okay. And send me a message and I'll add you to my mailing list. Um, so I'm kind of like restructuring everything right now. But yeah, queenaline.com okay. is coming up soon. And on Instagram, queenaline.raw. Cool. I love that. And are you taking, you're taking like clients to help them with their detox journey, with their raw food journey, their juicing, all of that? Yes. I do one-on-one coaching. I offer one hour calls and also like a six month program. If somebody wants to work with me for like a six month period of time or a six week period of time. So it could be like a mini cleanse or a more extended juice cleanse. Um, And I could cater to anything you need. Like if you need to work with me for a year then I could definitely do that. But yeah, I love wow. working with people one-on-one. Um, it really helps, you know, when we go into like different things too, like I don't stop at just the food. You know, we talk about um, relationships, we talk about breath work, you know, I can guide them. And I'm, I'm kind of an intuitive coach, so I help them depending on what they need. So some people may be ready for some dance and movement. Some people yeah, right for some you know, breath work, um, some maybe not. Um, so I just really like tune in to, to what the individual needs and, and support them Aww. with them. And I can help I them that. too, like through a transition if they don't necessarily want to do a juice cleanse. There's other ways to get to raw um, that don't involve a juice cleanse. Some people may go the mucusless diet healing system with like, you know, right. raw till four for a while. Um, you know, juice cleanse is not the only way. It's just 
a way sure. to get there. Yeah. It is kind of a fast track though, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I was just talking yesterday, I was talking to um, Dan McDonald. I had him on and oh, we were talking wow. about our first one we did was all like emotional stuff and unpacking all of that. And yesterday was kind of a little bit of that, but we also talked about the juicing and using, you know, like enzyme therapy and things like that. And just like how the acceleration of, you know, you can definitely just eat raw foods and you're going to be cleansing and detoxing. But if you're implementing a juice cleanse and you're hydrating and you're, you know, maybe taking some herbs or some enzymes and getting colonics, it's like you're completely just, you know, you are on the fast track to getting like what you talked about, the parasites out, all of that, you know, I think a lot of our, you know, going circling back around to the trauma piece, a lot of those live in our tissues yeah. and it's through hydrating them and, you know, getting that waste out where it's like, that's how we can help remove those blockages that we have um, within our bodies, you know, both physical and emotional, you know, it's all, it's all connected. Oh, yeah. And so many people, to reiterate that, so many people will come on the juice cleanse and feel very irritable or very angry at some point. Yeah. And then you, like, I've come to understand that they're just on the verge of a big release, you know, right. because you affect us emotionally. So they'll, like, they don't want to die, right? They don't want to leave you, yeah. which, is a post, which is a comfortable home for them. So they wreak havoc on us emotionally. Yes. So people are like, oh my God, I'm so irritable. And I just want to like scream. And I'm like, oh my God, just like hold on like one or two, few more days. You're going to see what comes out. And then once they yeah. have that big release, I was feeling that yesterday and I had a release today and I feel so much better, you know, wow. it's like, yeah, it's still happening. And I, I can't even, wow. I cannot even believe what's, what's happening, you know, right now. And it's almost like I'm doing these to, to show myself because I'm like, oh no, like, there can't be that much. I remember when I did my first juice, long juice cleanse, I was like, I don't have mucoid plaque. Like I'm super healthy. Yeah, like, not me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, yes, me. <laughs> wow. So yeah. So are you implementing colonics on this one? Um, I've done a few enemas, but no colonics. Yeah. Okay. But I have done, I have done some colonics, colon hydrotherapy with the angel of water um, yeah. in the last few years, but I haven't gone I'd be curious to go though. I probably, yeah, I might yeah, do. I mean, I did, I mean, I'm going to, I really want to do a, a really extended juice fast as well. Like I said, when we started, I did 21 days and I went on my last day, I went and I did a clonic and the parasite that came out of my body was like, <laughs> it was literally on that last day. And I was just, I took a picture of it. I, I was like, I can't even believe this. And it's one of those things where until you see it actually come out of your body, there's like, you just can't describe that feeling. Mm -hmm. of, it was like life changing for me seeing that, like yeah. leave my body. And yeah. so I'm thinking, like, I know I have more if there's, you know, I know I do. So, but yeah, it's amazing. Like you are such an inspiration and such a motivation for others who want to really be able to come to a place where they feel like they are able, like they have the self-discipline and the self-love piece that they're, I think it comes back around to, to that, the self-love piece, because so many people don't believe they can, you know, they just think I can't do it. I just can't do it. And they put up that roadblock. And so you're sitting here and you've, you know, on, you're on your second round now of this amazing journey and you're sharing. And I just feel like it's such a beautiful um, inspiration for others who want to do an extended fast like this. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, for that. Thank you. thank you so much. Yes. And yes. I just want to tell everybody, you know, that you can do it. You just like, there is no limit to what you can do. You really can do so much once you believe in yourself and start small. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an extended juice cleanse. You know, my first yeah. ones were seven days, 10 days, set yourself some smaller goals. My friend Jenny, she has a group called the weekend juice fasters as well, where she encourages people to do two days a week. Two okay. days a week is huge. That adds up over the years. So, over time. Sure. Yeah. So build that trust in yourself, build that confidence in yourself. 
you know, once you see that you could go one day on juices, you'll be like, wow, I did that. Just like going one day without alcohol could be a big yes. deal. So trust yourself that you can do it. And then once you get through that one day then you build that confidence and then you could, you know, string a second day and a third day. But yeah, just next thing you know, you're at seven, 10, 20. Yeah. So I went to ask you, I forgot to ask you, are you, what's your quantity? Like when you're juicing like this, are you making sure you're really getting those? What is it like, like a gallon of juice in a day, basically? Yeah. So I would say, you know, depending on the person too, you know, everybody's different, but I would say definitely minimum four of these a day, four, four a day. 32 right. ounces quarts uh, a day to about six or eight, okay. depending, you know, if somebody, right. um, depending on how active you are, I guess. Yes. And exactly. Sure. But I say, don't restrict, do not restrict. Okay. Like one of the biggest mistakes people make is not drinking enough juice, especially yes. fruit juices. Um, fruit I was juices just going to ask you, are you restrictive on the fruit juice? At all, at all, at all. Like I, most days I just drink fruit juices, honestly. And then once in a while I'll say, Oh, I, I'm having a little like sodium craving and then i'll do yeah. um what i like to call like a v10 like a v8 but i put like okay celery beets carrots tomatoes uh parsley lime and it tastes like you know those v8s yeah, um, yeah right kind of you know <laughs> i mean they're like yeah, but better oh, but better yeah but you kind of like satisfy that salt craving so when we're having salt right. cravings in the evening especially for me then I'll have the celery or just straight celery juice, medical medium. He just recommends starting yes. the day with celery juice. So yeah, okay. I prefer fruit during the day, but I definitely don't restrict. Um, okay. Cantaloupe. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you know, just we, you know, we are attracted to fruit. We want to eat the fruit. And I think for most people, like maybe one or two green juices a day would be like reasonable, but you know, they're not as tasty as a fruit juice for sure. And like, for me personally, it was really hard to try to like, I initially I was like, I'm going to do half and half. And I just ended up surrendering to the fact that <laughs> I really want to just have the fruit juice. And I'm just going to like allow and trust my body that it's not steering me in the wrong direction. No. So I did like, you know, four, sometimes five. And then I do like just one green juice where I'd load up on like parsley and cilantro and celery. And like you said, but that's amazing because yeah, I, it's kind of like, yes, you can do fruit juice and you can still succeed and you can yes. still, you're not creating like all this candida in your body and all of these things that people talk about. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I also, yeah. yeah. And I also think that that's um, really important because I think that can be the, one of the defining, like as to whether or not you're going to succeed or not, because if you don't like what you're drinking, you know, if you're making juice and you're just kind of like trying to like suck it back, but you're not really liking it. Mm -hmm. I feel like trying to succeed with that is really probably not as much of a reality as if you're like, Oh my gosh, this pineapple juice yes. is so good. Exactly. Yeah. You have to yeah. enjoy it. You want to enjoy the journey. And some people do yeah. prefer, they like the green juice. They like how it tastes. Yeah. Not me. Like I struggled a lot with the green juice. Yeah. And it was the same. Like I felt kind of bad just having the fruit juices, but it's, you got to trust yourself in that process. Exactly. You got to make exactly. it as enjoyable as possible. So I a hundred percent agree. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I have uh, one question. At, I ask all my guests. It's the same one at the end of each podcast. And the question is, what is your authentic life print? What is your unique expression as Aline in the world? Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Unique expression. Like, like, what am I here to do? Yeah, like there's only one of, there'll never be another one of you. So mm. what is your unique gift to this world? As as Queen Aline, I think I help people believe in themselves and yeah, like, like believe in miracles. You know, especially yeah, those who who've known me, who saw how deep and dark I went. Yes, I give hope. I I think I give hope to people to like turn their hearts to God too, and then like have him transform us because like everything I'm doing is by his grace. You know, I really feel yes. like I was saved and I was given 
uh, not just a second chance, but a third and a fourth and a fifth chance yes, at yes. life. And, you know, it's, it's like amazing what's been happening in my life. So I think, and if I could do it, then anybody could do it. I really believe we have yeah. that, that potential. So right. yeah, I help people find find the potential within them and um, and just turn their hearts over to God and let the oh. miracles flow in their life. Yeah. Oh, I love that. It's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing. You, Like I said, you really, really, really are inspirational and You've got this beautiful energy and glow about you. And I feel like, yeah, I feel like you're really somebody that um, people can really connect with. So I'll list all of your info in the show notes. And yeah, thank you so much for coming on and sharing today. Thank you. Right back at you, beautiful. You have an amazing yeah. gift and I really love coming on here. Thank you for having me. And thank you to everybody who's watching.